Check. One, two, three. The D. Three. Three. Yeah. This is the D. Three. Go. Your guide to Detroit. Your guide to Detroit's arts and entertainment scene. This is the D. Three. Hello and welcome to the podcast. I'm Seth Ressler, your co-host. Becky and I are off this week, so we have another Greatest Hits clip show uh, to tide you over until we come back next week. But I did want to remind you about something, and that is the Detroit Popsicle Stick Challenge. Uh, here's what happens. Becky and I talk about so many awesome new things to try and do in Metro Detroit that sometimes, honestly, even we have trouble keeping track of all of them. So I heard about this idea, and it's something that my girlfriend and I decided that we were going to do, uh, is that every time we hear about a place that we want to go to, we write it on a popsicle stick and we stick it in a jar. And then if we find ourselves on a free night or a free weekend where we're like, oh, we should go do something, instead of our minds going blank and going, what was that thing that I heard about that I was like, oh yeah, I want to go try that, we just draw a stick out of the jar uh, and we go there. And so we want you to do this as well. We want to encourage you to start your own popsicle stick jar. All you need, a bunch of popsicle sticks. I, no joke, we filled out a 100 of them in like 15 minutes. It was easy. Uh, and it's even easier with this podcast, right? Because at the end of every uh, interview we do, uh, at the end of every episode with a guest, we play a game where we ask them for a series of rapid-fire recommendations. That's what you're going to hear in this episode is a number of our past guests uh, and their recommendations. So you can write down the ones you like on a popsicle stick. And what we want you to do is if you actually do this and you go to one of those places and you're sitting there snapping photos and you're tweeting them out and you're posting them on Instagram, just use the hashtag Detroit Popsicle Challenge, right? And that lets us know that you're doing this because you heard about it on the debrief and you're taking part in the Popsicle Challenge. The other thing that you can do is you can call us, leave a voicemail, let us know how it's going, right? So uh, if you go to our website, there's an orange tab on the right side that says send voicemail. All you have to do is click it and you can leave a voicemail right there from your computer or your cell phone. Real easy. Let us know, hey, uh, I'm doing the Detroit Popsicle Stick Challenge and here's where we went and here's what happened and here's what we thought of it. All right. Cool. Uh, Let's get into the clip show, starting with uh, a guy that we had on the show recently. He is an absolutely fantastic chef. His name is Mike Ransom, and he's got these Ema noodle shops. He's got two of them now. Uh, The first one was in Corktown, uh, and they have been named by Mark Kurlianchek over at the Detroit Free Press, the best restaurant of 2019. So we had him on the podcast not long after that. And here were his rapid fire recommendations. (laughs) All right, here we go. Let's start with this. Do you have a favorite place that you like to go for cocktails? Cocktails. Let's see. Mutiny. Ooh. I haven't been there. So oh, that's great. Yeah. By Elk yeah. Club, kind of. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I just, I, I love the tiki drinks, and I always have a great drink. And it's, uh, it's a good time. And they have karaoke there on Thursdays, which I'm a karaoke voyeur. I, I might sing once in a blue moon, but it's really entertaining. You're a lurker at karaoke A lurker, bars? yeah. I'm a lurker, yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. creepy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking of music, who's your um, favorite Detroit musical artist? Um, right now, I'd say Kevin Reynolds is my favorite. Oh. He's got a new album coming out that's on uh, Yoruba Records. Uh, uh, the artist owner of that label is called Osun Lade, and he's got just a really good really great catalog of music and kevin is um he's got a full-length album that'll be out in uh, i think a month or so mm-hmm. but really looking forward to hearing that nice uh you talked about the electronic music scene mm-hmm. do you first of all do you still go out clubbing and if so do you have a favorite club to go to uh wow i kind of go clubbing i guess <laughs> it's uh, hard when you're working uh, i know yeah. it's is it is difficult, you know? I would say um, Marble Bar is my club of choice. Mm-hmm. I don't even—I wouldn't even call that a club, though. It's more of a more of a, a venue, I guess. Yeah, spot. Yeah, but that would be the closest thing to clubbing that I've I've done lately. How about a favorite ethnic food shop in Metro Detroit? Ethnic food shop. Um, wow, I think Saigon Diamond is my favorite pho shop. And I have so many favorites, but I have to say 
they would get number one because I eat there like three or four days a week. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> so where is that? It's on 13 and the Quinn, oh, 13 and John R. Ah. Across from CVS. It's a little pho mm. shop, and their broth and their consistency of the whole bowl itself is just, it's always on point, and it's like my midday recharge throughout the week. Okay. So I go in there, they look at me, they're like, yeah. They, they just tell me, you want the number 30 with the beef on the side? No, I'm like, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. my thing. That's my jam. I don't even jam. have a menu in hand or anything. Yeah. Wow. Okay, you used to own a record shop. Correct. Co-own. Yes. Co-own. Yes. yes. And it's uh, it's yes. not give you too much credit. We all, we all <laughs> ran into the ground together. It wasn't just me. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you go record shopping in Detroit now? Wow. Um, I go to Hello Records. Right around the corner from you. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, I go to Detroit Threads and, and Tramic. Mike always has some really, really nice stuff that's always hard, you know, just hard to find stuff you never expect to see there. And those are my two. Yeah, Hello's in the neighborhood, and then um, Threads is just, you know, they, their used section is also really, really expansive. Where in Detroit would you go if it was the last day before you died? Where would I go? Uh-huh. Hmm. I would go to the top of the Rinsen and sit in the in the room and wish that it was spinning still. Oh, and just yeah. sit there and wish that I could get a martini up there, but nothing's there right now. No. So that's Yeah. I, I, I miss that. That's got a, a point of nostalgia in my heart. Yeah, the I, summit. The uh, summit. Yeah. Yeah. And when I left it was Coach Insignia, Coach, I think. Yeah. Yep. But somebody needs to get that. Well actually I think it is gonna be a new restaurant very soon, but I it guess should be. That view from that point, to me that's Detroit right there. All right. If you're into biking culture in the city of Detroit, you know the name Jason Hall. Jason was one of the founders of Slow Roll, uh, and Slow Roll Detroit, of course, just got huge, massive. Now there are hundreds and hundreds of bicyclists who go and bike around the city uh, every single summer. And Jason is now back with a new organization called Ride Detroit. The rides are smaller, a little more intimate, and we had him on the podcast to talk about that. And before he left, we got his rapid-fire recommendations. All right, I'm going to ask you for a series of rapid-fire recommendations or uh, just fast questions. Tell me the first thing that comes to mind. Starting with this, you've watched a lot of neighborhoods change over the years. Which one do you think has evolved the most and why? Whew, that's a good one. I'm going to say Corktown. Uh... Corktown's really evolved, I think, just because of the timing of everything right now. Um, and, they, and they've really had a, an opportunity to sit back and watch other neighborhoods. I would have said Midtown, but, uh, and, and they're doing it. I mean, Sue's really still killing it over there. But, but Corktown, the, like, what they're doing right now and the speed that they're doing it at. And, you know, yeah, I would say Corktown right now. And, and I'm kind of biased because I live in Corktown. Right. But, but no, honestly, like, no, I mean, if you go over there and you look at Michigan Avenue and you talk about just since the announcement of Ford, the amount of development that has occurred on Michigan Avenue. Wow. Wow. So you go by all kinds of buildings in Detroit. Um, what's one that's still out there that you would like to restore yourself if you had unlimited funds? Wow. Can, it's, it can't be a building that's already... Maybe the Moose oh. Lodge. Okay, where's that? It's uh, the Moose Lodge over off of... Uh, it's a, I don't even know. It's, yeah, it's still theirs, I think. It's over behind like uh, the old Town Pump and Centaur yes, off, yes, off yes. Clifford over there. Yeah. Uh, that one, or I can't think of the name of the bank, but there's a bank over there that right off of, I think, Clifford as well, that still has the vault in it. And it used to mm. be a club way back in the day, and you could actually go in the vault. I have a thing for old banks. Oh yeah, so that's super cool. yeah, that's that's probably one of those two would be it. Um, all the other ones, man, you know, Uncle Dan's got two of them. You know what I mean? <laughs> all the he's good ones do- are taken. He's doing a number. <laughs> Come on, Dan, let me get one of those. What is the best biking anthem or biking song by a Detroit artist? Ooh, by a Detroit artist, the best. Detroit. I mean, okay. When you it's, launch a new bike ride, like yep. what do you blast through the speakers? It's gonna be definitely. It's gonna be something Motown. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I'm a huge Stevie Wonder fan, and this song has nothing to do with biking. But Boogie on Reggae Woman is 
just the energy behind that song is really like gets the crowd going. Um, so that would be my Detroit. I, I don't know if, you know, does that count? Motown? Stevie Detroit, is good Steve? for every occasion. Yeah, I'm doing this 30 Motown? song uh, challenge and I swear I could name a Stevie song for oh, yeah. every single category. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. That's yeah. another cry moment for me. Take me to a Stevie Wonder concert. And watch uh-huh. me cry. Okay, Seth, we got to do that. <laughs> okay, so I'll show you guys my track video after this. I cry in that too. I'm okay, telling you, I'm good. a crier, man. Oh. Can you do it? Can you do it on command? No, I can't. I'm and that's start what crying. Good. People oh. always say that they're like, "Do you do this on command?" I'm like, "I wish, man." Right. This is the then money the money was, was yeah, the bread yeah. maker right here. So you grew up here. What was your favorite Detroit spot as a kid? Belau, Belau. Everything you know. I just I grew up. Downtown. My parents uh, both worked at the UAW. So uh, whenever after school or anything went down, it generally revolved around downtown, Uh, even later when I went to friend's school in Detroit. So we used to just really, Detroit was our playground. So no kidding, man, Belle Isle was like the spot. You know what I mean? You had the slide alone was hours worth of fun. But it was really, it felt like an infinite world as a child. Like now, you know, it's only five miles long and yada, yada, yada. But back then, it almost felt like this weird enchanted forest. Like like you could never be found. And that was what it was for me. And as soon as I got old enough to ride my bike there, I did that too. And it just expanded. To this day, that's where I go when I go to clear my head uh, on my bike or anything of that nature I, I go get a couple laps in uh, on the aisle. Nice. Uh, we've talked about how you've traveled all over the country and even the world uh, as an ambassador for Detroit. What is the question you hear most often about the city of Detroit? Wow, what is the question I hear most about? <laughs> it's usually something funny. It's no, it's it, Out of the country, it's going to be something not related to bikes. It's going to be about entertainment. It's going to be about Eminem. You know what I mean? Like, because that's, they, they, out of the country, they're trying to find common ground. So that's kind of Eminem, you know? If you're in London, it's techno, but usually it's Eminem. Uh, the question I hear the, the, the most is, how do you make a living off that? <laughs> yep. <laughs> that's a good question. To be honest, <laughs> that is the question I get asked all the time. They, people, they, they, they get so excited about everything. And then when it finally settles in, that that's my job. You know, they're like, wait a minute, how, how do you how do you make money doing this? So that's pretty much that's it. So if you had a time machine, first of all, would you go back in time or forward in time? And to what moment in Detroit? Oh, I would definitely go back. I would love to see what Detroit looked like when, you know, and I hate to use heyday because it's we're, we're coming into a different heyday. But a million people in the streets, you know, I mean, the days of streetcars. I can't even imagine, yeah. you know, and that's just in America, but but Detroit too, you know, like imagine the industrial revolution at that time and when the the time of invention. I'm I'm a big nerd that way, and so that would have been a fascinating time to be in Detroit, you know, to see the auto industry really coming into it, it fruition, and you know that would be a crazy time. So I would probably go back in in, in that. What's your favorite? bike accessory that you own <laughs> my bell it's, oh yeah yeah it's because you got to get out of the way that's why <laughs> is, that's, is, that's is it just own. a straightforward bell is there anything uh usually the loudest thing that i can find <laughs> the most annoying loudest thing because if i'm using my <laughs> bell i'm going fast and i need you to move so that's why i mean i got some pretty awesome light kits these days i mean with the technology that they're doing with lights you can blind somebody in a second but i'd much rather just pull up behind you and blow a big old horn <laughs> that's great i was a detroiter who's ever ever whose name everyone should know a detroiter that yeah. everybody's name should know besides yeah. mine yes yeah can't name yourself uh, eric thomas Okay. Uh, Eric Thomas is is coming up, you know, and I and I say that not he's not coming up, man. Eric is here. He's a, a speaker, public speaker from Detroit, very outspoken and very uh, tied into uh, to what's going down in the city of Detroit. And I really agree with a lot of stuff that Eric says. Um, and I, I think that soon you will, we will all know. I mean, I think the a good majority of people know who Eric is. If you're a listener of blogs and podcasts and happenings. 
but pretty soon he'll be changing the changing the landscape around here. Is that a running for public office kind of thing? I don't know if I don't know. Nah, I don't see Eric doing that. No. I don't see him running. I, I see him working with somebody who's running. You know what I mean? Um, but why nah. do I feel like he knows something that he's not nah. telling us? <laughs> nah. Nah. nah, that dream came and went. You know, my mm-hmm. mom used to say, "You should run for mayor." But the mayor doesn't make enough money. Okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. not, mm-hmm. You know, I was got, Mike Duggan one of those guys asking you, uh, "How do you make a living doing that?" <laughs> well, I, gotta, well, I feel you like know, I could be doing right, better. Right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. Very nice. Natasha Berry is an actress and director here in Detroit. We had her come on the show and co-host a couple of episodes with us. And before she left, she had a couple of recommendations of her own. All right, here we go. We're going to ask you for a series of rapid-fire recommendations. Just tell us the first thing that comes to mind. Okay. Starting with this, you like to say you're a business. I am. Mm -hmm. Where is your favorite place in the Detroit area to go for a business lunch? I love fat salmon sushi in Hamtramck. Ooh. Ooh. Yes. And let me tell you why. Okay. I love that because that's what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it because it's quaint. It's the food is delicious. You can bring like if you start off with a normal business meeting, you can bring in your own alcohol. I love that. Yeah. I know. Right. Mm-hmm. You could and you, they don't rush you out of there. You could sit there all day, mm. have good food, your own drink. And it's, they're just so nice in there. And then they play wonderful Japanese videos. Oh, and you cool. don't know what they're saying, <laughs> but it's the most entertaining thing you ever saw in your life. All those game shows. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, if you could create your own line of Detroit t-shirts, and I know you got some ideas, what would the slogan be on it? Well, I, you know what? That's funny that you say that. I actually uh, know a person who I love their line. It's oh. called Detroit We're Everywhere. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And um, every now and then he calls me up. His name is uh, Howard Watson. And his his place is right on Jefferson, right in the heart of Jefferson, right past Belle Isle. And uh, the concept is so great because me and like Seth, not being from Detroit, yeah. he has these new shirts that uh, Detroit were everywhere. But it's like by way of wherever you're from. Like Detroit, by way of, for me, Boston. Yeah. You know, it, it's so cool. And I like that because here I am, you know, in Detroit. And it's just nice to represent, but also represent your own place yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, oh. yeah, Detroit, we're everywhere. Nice. Uh, you are a playwright. I am. Uh, tell <laughs> us about another playwright besides yourself in the Detroit area. A playwright that other people should know. I, I'm a big advocate for Dominique Morisseau. I love what she does. I mean, she she's wrote Detroit 67, Pipeline, uh, Paradise Valley. Uh, I'm sorry, Paradise Blue, which is about Paradise Valley. Mm-hmm. Um, she's just phenomenal. And, and her way of writing is, and for her to be out of Detroit, I mean, Cass Tech alumni. Yes. And now she's on Broadway, man, like with uh, Ain't Too Proud to Bake. So, yeah, she is my go-to all day long. But there are a lot of other great playwrights that just want to say, I just don't know all of you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Unfortunately, it has been raining nonstop. Yes, it has. Okay. So if you can't get outside, what's your favorite rainy day place to go in Metro Detroit? If I can't get outside? Yeah. Rainy day place to go in Metro Detroit. You know what? I, I know I, I it's another sushi place, but I got to tell you guys, it's really good. It's Nambi's. It's Nambi's on, uh, it's in Midtown. Right by Cast and Wayne State area. Really good place on a rainy day to just chill, have some udon noodles, and which I don't eat because they're really hot. But Oh, okay. Oh. But I recommend them for I, I, I thought it was going to be about sinks. Because like... they're dirty? <laughs> okay. You know how I feel about those sinks. But no, they're, it's a really good place to go and just chill. I love places where they don't rush you. I know. That is you know? phenomenal and yeah. kind of rare. Yeah, Yeah, very rare. Do you have a favorite boutique clothing store? It's called Exquisite, and it's spelled really funky like. Yeah, and I know that place. Yeah, it's right off Coolidge. Great. I love it because you'll go there and won't find your stuff on other people's backs. I love that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> nice. I love that. You don't want to be walking around. No. I live in Oak Park. Yeah, I gotta it's go close. Check. Oh, it's, it's great. Close. It's great. What is a hidden gem in Detroit in terms of a venue or a place that you don't think people know about but you really like? Hmm. 
Traffic Jam. I still like that place. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Traffic Jam and Snow. Yeah, mm-hmm. I like that place. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, yeah it's time. it's fun. You know, you can you can still have a good time. Everybody, it's kind of like Cheers. Yeah. Because everybody knows everybody. Mm-hmm. So the it's owners really cool are great. Yeah, yeah, the owners are great. I love that place. Cool. Yeah. Do you have a favorite local coffee shop? Detroit Cafe. It's um, Java House. Is is right in ref, right by the Refer Theater. She her name. Oh, yeah. yeah, she uh, is married to George. He does all the the renovations of homes. Yeah, George Johnson. No, 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 no. Oh, I feel so bad. At, John George is his name. Oh, okay. Yeah, his wife Alicia has the Java House, and it is actually really good. They have good sandwiches there. And it's also another good place when it's raining. But they have, <laughs> and they don't rush you. They have, <laughs> <laughs> and they have sinks. And they have sinks. <laughs> they wash their hands. Yeah. <laughs> but they have great, great flavored coffee, smoothies, you name it. And pe- there's always artists in there doing stuff. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. It's right in the artist village area. It's great. How about a uh, favorite waterfront activity? Do you like to be along the riverfront? I do. I, I don't like bugs, but mm-hmm. I always got to tell you that. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> Duly noted. <laughs> yes, yes. But I, I like going, I actually really enjoy, especially how Belle Isle is now. Now, when I was a kid, I didn't really like Belle Isle that much. Mm. I, I didn't because, you know, it was a lot of hanging out and stuff and it didn't really seem family friendly. But now... Bella was beautiful. I, I I love the landscaping that they've done, and it just looks so clean. You know, I love yeah. it, and so I love going down there and just sitting on the rocks that are all, all broken up right at the edge of the water. Beautiful, and I love, and I don't know how many people do. I love the Bella Be- Bella Beach. Oh yeah, yeah. I would rather go there, Hipster Beach. Yes, yeah. so much fun, mm-hmm. so much fun. All right, I won. Yeah. Big prize. <laughs> All right, that's it. I hope that gave you some ideas to put on your popsicle sticks. Go do it. Go out. Have fun in uh, Detroit this summer. And when you are out and about, make sure that when you're posting to social media, you use the hashtag Detroit Popsicle Challenge and that you leave a voicemail for us at our website, thedebriefdetroit.com, and let us know how it's going. We'd love to hear from you. The Debrief. Your guide to Detroit's arts and entertainment scene. 